What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that all of you had a wonderful 4th of July weekend. I hope it was relaxing. Y'all got some good food in, some laughs, some love, and now everyone's going back to work. It is so hot <laughs> where I am. I'm not used to it being this hot. It's like 90 degrees here. But let's get into this story. So TMZ caught up with Nene Leakes and her assistant while she was shopping in Beverly Hills. And they asked her a few things, right? So they asked her about um, Kim Solciak. And she said that she reached out to Kim. And, you know, she said that Kim reached out to her while she was going through, you know, Greg's last days and he had a terminal illness and rest in peace, Greg, because he was one of my favorite husbands on the show. Like he, you know, was never in women's business. Hey, Patricia. Um, <laughs> and he always supported her. You know, they had divorced and then got remarried. So, you know, their love was real. And he told her before he passed away, you know, he wanted her to find love again. And he's like, whoever gets you, you know, is a, gets a good one. And um, and they also said, you know, well, you and Kim brought so much to the show and, you know, you brought the funny to the show. You guys were a couple of the funniest characters. <laughs> and that made me laugh because, I mean, they were funny, but most of the time they were fighting. Right. But anyway. So um, they said, well, would you ever consider, you know, returning uh, to the show because, you know, what do you think about the show right now? Do you think that you and Kim, you know, would ever come back or should come back? And in classic Nini fashion, she goes, check the ratings. You can just check the ratings. Shade, child. <laughs> that was some shade thrown to Bravo. And, you know, to be fair, ratings for reality TV have been on the decline across the board because of streaming apps, because of the writer strike, uh, because of, well, I guess not the writer strike, right? That's scripted. But TV as a whole, I guess people don't really watch it live like they used to during the first seasons because there's so many streaming apps. Like a lot of people will catch things on, you know, Peacock or whatever streaming service that they have now. And so, but that was just funny. Like that was the classic Nini that we all love and miss. <laughs> She's like, check the ratings, just check the ratings. Um, I definitely, you know, would love to see Nini come back. I think that she would definitely add her spice, her sugar and spice and everything nice to the show. However, Andy said the door is closed, which of course is one of her iconic lines, trying to be shady to her, but again, and I made an earlier video about this. You can't sue a corporation for racism and um, a hostile work environment and, you know, all these different things. Like, that's serious. This isn't just a, you know, a, a beef or friendship beef between you and Kim that you guys can just put to rest. Because to be honest, Kim did say some really problematic things um, in earlier seasons, right? About Nini's house having roaches, about Candy's house being in the hood and, you know, the way she treated her sister and sweetie. Like Kim was really problematic. And, you know, it's unfortunate that her and Croy are going through such a tumultuous divorce and she's having all these financial issues. But Kim was not one of my favorite people on the show. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> like she just, she, her whole storyline was Big Papa. She was always, she always had that red cup in her hand and always fixing her wig, always fighting with the girls if she showed up at all, right? And, you know, she always had, <laughs> she always had something, some excuse, some illness. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I remember what Nene said. Nene said, Kim is the only person I know that got arthritis, heart trouble. <laughs> she was naming everything, y'all. On that, on that party bus, she said she got gingivitis. She got <laughs> stroke fever. She said, where is your scooter, Kim? Where is your scooter? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to get through this video. 
But Nene is classic. Like she is funny. See, that's the difference I think between Nene and Kim, right? Like Nene went on to, you know, work on Glee, right? And Broadway, you know, I mean, she is charismatic in ways that Kim is not. Kim is Kim, <laughs> Kim, Kim, no, seriously, um, to me, she is a one dimensional character. Like she's very flat, whereas Kim or Nini is three dimensional. She is just, she has all these one liners. She has this personality that's very magnetic and, but she does need an ensemble. Like she needs her castmates, whereas Kim, I wasn't watching for for Tardy, don't be tardy for the party, but um they did have an audience because it ran for multiple seasons. So yeah, I just, you know, I think that unfortunately, Nini, um I don't know. I don't think that the the Bravo would bring her back. But I will say this. I'll say that. Never say never because money talks and if that's truly what the people want, because when they asked her, you know, would you come back? Nini responds and she goes, I would come back for my fans. Okay, Nini. <laughs> she would come back for that check. Okay. Which is nice, right? I mean, where else are you going to get paid to, you know, go to lunch with your girlfriends and go on trips and, you know, have little petty fights back and forth, bickering back and forth. But I mean, at one point, I think she was one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid housewife um, among the multiple franchises. I believe it was 2.5 million per season. So that is a really nice paycheck for a minimal amount of work, right? Or just filming, just living your life. So yeah, if I was her, I would want to come back too. It's unfortunate that she you know, um, took legal action against her employer and then dropped it. That's my thing. Like, if you're going to do that, if you're going to burn that bridge, at least get paid for it, you know? But I don't know if it was may maybe insufficient evidence or I'm not sure, but um, if she was able to bury the hatchet with Kim, then perhaps her and Andy you know, can come to some agreement, but it wasn't just Andy either. It was Bravo. It was, you know, truly original. It was NBC Universal. Like she went after NBC. So I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think that they're going to let her come back. And I know Kim's appearance um, is supposed to be either this upcoming week or the next week. So I know she's trying to get back on reality TV because she is in all kind of debt. I mean, owing the IRS over a million dollars is crazy. And then she has that gambling addiction, allegedly. <laughs> um, would I know that, you know, her and Croy, I know they they owe $52,000 um, to the casino in the Bahamas and just Croy put the paperwork online where she would gamble hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, during the tardy, show, she said that she lost $250,000 at one casino. I think it was that same one in the Bahamas, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I'm not sure. But you guys drop down in the comments. I want to hear from you, your thoughts, you know, about uh, Nini shading Bravo and, <laughs> and reaching out to Kim. Would you? I mean, I feel like if I guess if enough people said that they really, truly wanted Nini um, back, they might consider it. Who knows? Like I said, I never say never, but I don't know. Um, but I do know Kim's cameo is coming up, and I don't know if she's going to be a permanent fixture on next season or not. But yeah, I guess it depends on how you know the audience reacts to her brief appearance um, on the upcoming show. But you guys, if you're new here, welcome. Please be sure to like the video. It helps it grow and be sure to subscribe and I will talk with you later. Take care aces. Bye.